Well, hi there, and thanks so much for choosing to view my video on how can we harness what arises in emergency in the everyday. My plan for this video is to share a presentation that I was going to have running in the background while all the wonderful participants of the, of the conference wandered by and we could engage in a conversation. However, now I'm going to talk to that presentation and let's collaborate. Join any sessions that are available to talk about this or feel free to email me on the address that I'll share at the end of uh, this video. So today we're going to be talking about, I'll be talking about, how can we harness what arises in emergency in the everyday? Now the first thing, I certainly don't have the answers, but it's something I'm interested in, given I live my life a lot from what is urgent. So I'm 45 years old, I have a very successful career in organisational change management, working with some of Australia's biggest companies as they navigate their way through large scale transformations. I am known as someone who operates best under pressure. I know myself as that and others know me as that. That is, I leave everything until the last minute. I submitted the abstract for this presentation and this poster with an hour to go before the deadline. I'm filming this videos, this video five hours before the deadline uh, for the videos to be uploaded and my fingers will be crossed that it uploads in time. Now there's a, I'm very aware this has an impact on both myself and others around me. So it's clearly a topic I'm very interested in. And as I said, I don't have all of the answers, but I do certainly have some insights. So earlier this year, as many of you will be aware, it'd be hard not to be aware, aware we had a major bushfire crisis here across Australia in many areas. And this had me get really present to and notice the actions of individuals, communities, organisations and government uh, during this crisis. And it's had me think what would be available if we were able to harness what arises during these times all of the time without having to wait for that crisis. What did arise? What difference could this make? And how can we all contribute to harnessing this in our everyday life? So firstly, what did arise in the emergency? We saw never-ending acts of bravery and courage, like this young boy uh, riding his family out of a crisis, um, brave enough to, to drive the boat in the midst of a firestorm. We saw firefighters putting themselves in danger constantly, remembering most of these, these firefighters are volunteers across communities in Australia, putting themselves in, in death-defying situations. And in fact, we did lose many firefighters during, um, during the crisis. Unfortunately, um, whilst they put themselves in these courageous situations um, to really defend their communities. So bravery and courage, a clear way of being that emerged during this emergency. What else we saw arise was support for our most vulnerable, whether that was animals, people who'd lost their homes, we saw again and again support for the most vulnerable in our communities. The other way of being what we saw arise was a level of self-expression that's not arising in the everyday. People took to the streets, they protested, they made their views very, very clear to our politicians refusing to shake the Prime Minister's hand, for example, when he visited communities. People wanted to speak up about what mattered and they got very passionate about it. The other thing we saw was a new kind of community, from communities coming together to support each other, to town hall meetings where communities had to drop anything that may have been in the way for them previously to work together to, to really support each other. There were stories of town hall meetings where people came together and shared the skills that they had and how they could contribute to the rebuilding and support of their communities. We started to see self-generative communities, people forgetting that they didn't like their neighbour and coming together to really support each other. So what gets in the way of this in the everyday? because I think that's important. Like why don't we do this all the time? And what I'd like to put forward and what I'm observing is really a focus on individual versus collective action. Mostly in the everyday, the way our societies now, you know, I guess function is that there is 
in the most part, and this is a, supposed to be a blanket statement, however, there is a tendency for us to focus as individuals and, and take action as individuals versus collective action. What we saw in this crisis was a focus on collective action. How can we work together to really support each other and get our way out of this crisis? So that's something I think gets in the way of us really you know, focusing on these ways of being in the everyday. Is that focus on us as individuals and individual action? I think also one of the things I've noticed uh, personally about that is individual action is quite exhausting. Uh, you know, people will take action on their own and the experience is one of burnout quite often. I'll focus on what matters, I'll keep doing it, I'll take the action. And people, you know, essentially don't have the energy or uh, I guess level of resilience to continue on their own. You know, therefore, so personally for myself, I know that I have a resistance sometime to really taking the actions I can see to take because I'm worried of the, of the impact that that will have on me. I also have a resistance sometimes to asking for support. And so those two things together, I think can really get in the way of us harnessing these ways of being every day. It's the other thing I've noticed is uh, we tend to focus on what's urgent uh, versus what's important. And we take action in that quadrant of urgent and important. Uh, you, there are even frameworks to support us on how to take action on those things or how to put it off. So how can we start to bring collective action, community, supporting each other and really focusing on what matters into that urgent and important quadrant? So where to from here? Needless to say, when I submitted this, COVID-19 and a global pandemic was really not a part of the network of conversations. Uh, it was just emerging across the globe. But what we've seen is that COVID-19 has highlighted similar responses to what I've spoken about here today on a global, global scale. So from here, how can we harness what we're seeing in this move towards community, in a move towards collective action? The ways I see from here are please join me for any opportunities there are to connect during the Conference for Global Transformation and let's continue the conversation. Let's expand the conversation. I know I'm not the only one thinking about this. And please also email me, let's connect, let's keep the conversation going. Thank you and I look forward to chatting with some of you very, very soon. Enjoy your conference. <laughs>